message this tablet here that's explaining the HTTP server. So I'll show you a trick that can help you really understand what's going on behind the scenes here. Here you can actually open up the code for the HTTP servlet by pressing Control and then clicking on the name. Uh, I assume you have downloaded the Tomcat source and uh, linked it to Eclipse. I have uh, mentioned that in my previous tutorial. If you haven't done that, uh, just go ahead and do that and then come back to this tutorial. Uh, once you do that, you will be able to uh, do this. You know, just control click on this class name and you actually open up a class. So this is the source code of the HTTP server as implemented by Tomcat. Now here you can see HTTP servlet extends the generic servlet. We've already seen that. Now I can do a control click on the generic servlet and I open up the generic servlet code itself. You can see here generic servlet is implementing servlet and servlet config. We don't have to worry about that as of now. Uh, let's let's just look at the, uh, the inheritance pattern. So we have the HTTP servlet here and the generic servlet here. So let's look at the generic servlet. We'll start with this one first. So go to the outline tab, you can see all the methods that, uh, that uh, the generic servlet has. So uh, there are a lot of methods which we have not seen here, but we'll look at the ones that we are uh, talking about now. We have the init servlet config. There you go. So we already spoke about this. Init method takes an object of servlet config as a parameter and uh, see what it does. It does a this.config equals config. So it's actually having a member called config and then it's placing the input config uh, value into this config. And then it's actually calling the blank uh, init method. You know, the init method without any parameters. This is again another thing that we saw. So what does this init method without parameters do? It does nothing. So uh, we'll come back to this. We'll try to understand why this uh, why this is done. Why are we calling a method that actually does not do anything? So, but as far as the init method is concerned, what it does, it takes this parameter, this other config parameter. We don't know what this is yet, but it's taking this config parameter and then it's putting it into its own uh, number variable. That's all that the init does. So this config is actually handed over to this by uh, Tomcat. We look at what this config is and how we can use it later. But uh, for now, this is what the init method does. So this is the first method that gets executed when the object is created. We have uh, the config passed to it and it so we save the config in its own number variable. Next, now we get a request. Now the service method has to run. Now here is the service method. The service method takes two parameters, one is the servlet request and one is the servlet response. And what does it do? It does not do anything. Again, the service method we saw is actually implemented, the core implementation is in the HTTP servlet class because it's, it takes care of the HTTP protocol specific activities. But the service method has been defined in the generic servlet and uh, it just has the interface defined that does not do anything. So now we'll look at the HTTP servlet class. Now the HTTP servlet class does not override the init. You can see there's no init method here, but it does have the service method over it. And so let's have a look at what it does. The service method takes the servlet request and the servlet response, and then it defines two variables called the HTTP servlet and the HTTP sorry the HTTP servlet request and the HTTP servlet response. It takes the input request and response and then it casts it into HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response. So this HTTP servlet class assumes that the request and the response that it's getting is actually of type HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response. Which is fair enough because we know that this HTTP servlet class deals with HTTP protocol. So the request and response that it gets is also HTTP. So if it is not, then it throws an exception saying it's a non-HTTP request. So Hey, this is not related to HTTP protocols at all. Why are you calling me? It just throws an exception and it gets out of this execution. But if, the, if this casting is fine, works fine, then it actually calls another service method here. But this takes, this does not take the servlet request and the servlet response. Notice it takes these two objects, which are 
HTTP server request and the HTTP server response. So, behind the scenes, HTTP server class implements another service method. But this one takes the HTTP server request and the HTTP server response. So, let's have a look at that method here. There you go. Here is a service method with HTTP server request and HTTP server response. Let's see what this does. That's fairly straightforward. It's, it takes the method from the request object, HTTP request, servlet request has a get method, so it gets the method, and then it checks if it's a do get, then it calls the do get, if it is a uh, head, then it calls a do head, if it's a post, it calls a do post, and so on. There are a few other things that's happening over here, but you don't have to worry about it. All you need to know is that based on the request, it's calling the do get and the do post and so on. And now what does the do get and the do post do here? We've already seen this in our previous tutorial. Let's pull up the do get, let's pull up the do post, etc. So the do post just prints a message saying the method not allowed or a bad request depending on the protocol here. So uh, all it does is in summary it just throws an error. So we do not want this to run. So if we anticipate a do post uh, execution, if we anticipate that there is a do post request which happens to the servlet, then we need to override it. So we have uh, to post in our server class so that that does not run. The service method that we saw earlier, this guy here checks this and uh, you know it calls the do get or the do post. Yes, it calls the do get if it's a get or a do post if it's a post. So when it does that, we will supply those methods so that uh, our methods the do get of our sublet or the do post of our sublet runs and uh, that's what the we will process the request and uh, the response. And of course, uh, you must have noticed the do post takes the request and the response and that's what's actually coming to us. So this is the piece of the code that is actually sending us this key value. So again, uh, do get is actually passing the request and the response by casting the back in a previous method. So we get this. Request and the response. So, HTTP server request and HTTP server response. We did it for our processing. Now, hopefully, the whole picture is clear. Okay, so we learned about uh, the init method and the service method. Uh, the service method is not something that we would uh, use or override often, but the init method has a very good purpose. Since we know that that's the first method that runs when the servlet is, uh, you know, the servlet object is initiated, uh, we can override the init method to write code there which we want to run when the servlet object is created for the first time. So any initialization code like opening a database connection or something like that can be done in the init method which is overridden. So what we need to do is we need to override uh, the init method here. We need to override the init method here but we need to make sure that if we override it we either call the, the super init method, we need to call this, or we need to make sure that we are taking this config uh, parameter that we are getting and we are putting it in as a member variable because this is a very important thing that the init method does. Even though we don't know what this config is right now, we should know that this is something that is passed to us by Tomcat and then, you know, init method by default puts it into a member variable so that it's accessible in our server. So this, this dot config can be used here. So we can use the config object in our do get. But if we override this init method with our own init method, we need to make sure that this is happening. Otherwise, we will use the config object that we get. So just to avoid all this, what we do is instead of overriding this init method, which takes the config parameter, we can override the init method here, which does not take a parameter. We know that this is called because this init method calls this init method. The method which takes the parameter calls a method which does not take a parameter. So this is kind of like a utility method that has been introduced, which makes it easy to overwrite or where we do not need the servlet config. So either way, if you overwrite this, you don't have to worry about the servlet config. We know that the base init method takes this property and saves it in a member variable, and then we can freely overwrite this with whatever we want. So again, uh, a common use case would be if you are 
creating a database connection. So you want to override the init method in your uh, subnet and create a database connection. But of course, you should remember that this is not something that you uh, execute across servlets. Every servlet will have its own init method. So you need to do something that is specific to this servlet alone. So uh, another thing you know that we as, as the end product of this init method is of course the servlet config. So what is the servlet config? It is some configuration values that you can uh, predefine, and uh, this servlet config object will contain that configuration parameter. So let's say, for example, I want to have a username being passed to this servlet as uh, you know uh, as a standard variable. Instead of doing all this, you know, when I'm taking this username as a parameter, I want it to be by default a particular value so that whenever the servlet starts that username will be available inside the servlet. So what I'll do now is I'll have, a, I'll have a string as the default username and I'll set it initially in the, the subnet itself and if, even if there are no parameters that are passed, the other the requests and the session and the context would be known, but uh, you know the value will be there by default in the subnet context. So in order to set a value, I can use annotations here. So along with these properties here, I can add something called as an init parameters equals. So here I can add as many parameters as I want here, and uh, I need to give an annotation at web. Web in it param name equals what user value and equals random. This will set the default user parameter to the value random. Okay, now we, we virtualize the init params and uh, I have one parameter here for the default user and the value is random. Now, in order to use this value in our uh, in our methods, we need to use the servlet conf. We have seen this in our init method explanation in our uh, generic servlet class. We saw that there is a servlet config object that's passed to the default init method. So this default init method init method puts the servlet config object into the config member of the class. So this member will be available for us as well. So uh, we can access this by using uh, the start get subnet config. So this will give us the subnet config. And this subnet config has a get init parameter method. So this get init parameter method can be used to pull up this value. So as long as I pass this um, name value here, I can get the response as well. So this will give us the initial value that we have set here. Chapter. 